Yes, there's a melting pot of information, Maggie. If you start with a fact, it's not really a pandemic yet in the sense it's not like SARS, it's not like Ebola. This is not something that's transmitted from people to people. This is a mosquito-borne virus, which is very similar to other viruses we've seen before, like dengue fever. So if you talk to the World Health Organization, their advice is very specific. You take normal anti-mosquito uh, prohibition, if you like, so it's doing the spraying you need to do, making sure your flesh isn't exposed, but they're not giving out advice that people should not travel as a result. That's the key message. Yeah. David, what, what are we learning anything? I mean, you mentioned Ebola there. It is so different. But every time we go through one of these, is the, is the industry learning from that and able to respond more quickly as a result? Yes, we learn very quickly from these incidents. If you just look at Brazil or the Caribbean now, Brazil, there is apparently a link between this particular virus and encephalitis. Uh, quarter four in Brazil last year, there were something like 4,000 cases of encephalitis. So the medical community are going to have to look at that very carefully to see whether there's a link. And then if you look at the Caribbean, the U.S. market to the Caribbean, there are about 13 million people a year that go there, plus all the cruise lines, which add another 25 million people. And they are very concerned that the right information gets out. Mm. So the key for us as an industry is you have to communicate very clearly in these situations what the problem is, what's being done about it, and what the risks are. So individual travelers can absolutely be across their travel decisions. And as we've just heard, many of the airlines and the cruise lines are now being absolutely flexible if pregnant women decide they do not want to fly to these locations. Which makes it a lot easier for people who, who you know, let's face it, have to plan these holidays um, with quite some lead time. David, what, another issue that is, is I know on the, on the minds of everyone in, in your industry and is much harder to quantify and to anticipate is the threat of terrorism. Um, what is the industry doing to, to help figure out the correct response to that. Well, I'm in Dallas because the first week of April we have a global summit precisely on this issue where we're convening government ministers and the private sector to focus on it. If you look at these incidents, Maggie, there are two kinds of incidents. There is one like we had in Paris before Christmas, which was similar to Madrid and London in the past, which was a random attack on people in that city. It wasn't specifically aimed at tourists. And in those situations, those cities recover to normal very, very quickly. Alternatively, you have attacks specifically on tourism. Take Egypt, take Tunisia, take Turkey, where in those countries the effect is dire and it's going to take those countries much longer to recover and get back to normal. And as you've already said, some of the tour operators in Europe have pulled out of Tunisia for a period of time, and the same with Egypt, until they're confident that the governments are on top of the security there and that the governments with private sector are working to make absolutely sure those destinations are as secure as possible for the traveling public. And tourism, of course, such an important source of, of income, an important key to part of the economy to these locations is going to take the cooperation of both the private sector and government uh, to get our heads around it. Yes. David, thank you so much for joining us today.